Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Constantine Karanopoulos. He's the CEO for Neo Performance Materials. How are you today? Great, Tracy. Thank you. And I understand that we're speaking to you in from Estonia. Is that correct? Indeed. That's the old town in Tallinn behind me. Um, I'm in my hotel room uh, and I'm here to visit our plant and participate in one of our uh, business unit meetings, as well as talk to the various government folks in Estonia. And of course, Neo Performance Materials is an international company. You have positions in 10 countries. Is that correct? That's correct. Now, you just announced, I thought this was an interesting news release, that you joined the UN Global Compact and you're committing to implementing its 10 principles to promote sustainability. I I just love this news release. Can you talk to the highlights of this, please? Sure. Um, You know, ESG is an environmental, um, social and governance uh, practices are becoming much more important. Uh, in our industry, both from uh, a customer point of view, who all expect us to us to to uh, live by ESG principles, but also um, in the public markets, um, investors expect the companies they invest in to uphold um, ESG principles in a in a sustainable way. Um, and um, this was the first step in uh, in a long process. So whatever we were doing along health and safety and environmental uh, and sustainability now becomes much more codified. And there is a set of principles articulated by the United Nations. Um, and we committed to uh, living by those principles. Um, I think that's sort of a minimum uh, almost, and that needs to continue to, to be translated into actual practices in the way that we do everything we do uh, in all of our plans, in all of our offices, in addition to all the sustainability benefits that our products uh, make possible. So all in all, I think it's it's the right thing to do. Uh, It's the right thing to do for all the stakeholders uh, for the company, and it will become a much bigger uh, thing for the entire industry. So the sooner folks in the industry um, adopt these principles and start working and implementing them and then reporting on them, the, the better um, the better it will be for everybody. So I would think ESG funds, and this of course is an exploding uh, sector in the financial market, would be knocking your door down. Can you comment on this? Well, this past week after, I, I spoke at a conference in London, uh, the, the annual Rare Earth Conference uh, on Monday, and I, I attended Tuesday, but Tuesday onwards, I was in London and had a number of meetings with uh, institutional investors in London and in the rest of Europe, uh, physically and uh, uh, and virtually. And yeah, clearly uh, ESG is top of mind for pretty well all the institutions that, uh, that I had conversations with this past week. So, um, of course, Neo Performance is the only company in the world that operates dual supply chains, chains inside and outside of China for rare earths, rare earth separation, and the commercial production of rare earths advanced material. You own and operate the only operating commercial rare earth separation facility in Europe. I want to I want to hit you with a question that, that I think, uh, can you comment on your valuation? Uh, many of us still deem your uh, valuation not to be where it should be. Um, clearly, we, we'd like to get the, the value of the company higher, but at the same time, without inviting hubris, of course, um, because don't forget that a year ago, we were trading at you know $8 and change. Of course, on the back of uh, the worst quarter in our recent history because of COVID, and a quarter, mind you, that we're still cash flow positive and profitable, which really speaks to the resiliency and the robustness of our business model. So right now, we feel better about the valuation compared to a year ago. But clearly, we we feel that the real value in the company uh, should be much higher because our, our current multiple reflects sort of resource type uh, companies as, spo- as opposed to uh, advanced material specialty uh, producers like us, especially uh, companies with a significant footprint uh, in Europe uh, and very well positioned to, to capture growth 
on the back of what is happening in the EV supply chains uh, in Europe and, uh, and eventually North America. Well, according to our uh, our coverage of your QT, Q2 results, we thought they were extraordinarily strong, Constantine. So on that note, and based on the rise in your stock price in the last year, is it too late for an investor to get in? Well, listen, I, I'm not selling any of my stock. Uh, it's, it's not... Um, Listen, I mean, I, given the fundamental underlying growth, um, uh, de demand growth in, in our space, I think it's never too late. I, 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 I'm very bullish on the industry. I'm very bullish on our company, in particular because of our unique skills and our unique uh, manufacturing footprint. So, no, I, I, as I said, I, I, I would like to see the valuation of the company much higher than it is today. And, you know, we're working on that, uh, on a strategy, hopefully to get us there. So, yeah, I, I have a lot of confidence in my team and um, I'm trying to be very responsive to what our customers are telling us that they would like us to do. And, and we're doing all those things. So if we execute on what we're trying to do um, with not a lot of, we don't need a lot of luck to, to uh, successfully execute uh, our, our European and uh, North American strategy. But if we do, then I think we, we should be able to achieve much higher levels of valuation for the company. And of course, Constantine, it's, it's such a pleasure to receive an update from you. You're certainly a leader in this sector, if not the leader in this sector. So many of us follow you uh, just because we're interested, of course, in where you think our sector is going. Can you comment in general about the rare earth demand right now? With there's a lot of conflicting media. We don't have enough rare earths. We need, you know. Would you like to use this as a platform on what you think is happening presently in the rare earth market? Because you know, it's our conclusion that we don't have enough rare earths. Okay, uh, here at Investor Intel. Um, to handle the EV, rising EV demand. Can you comment on this? Um, yeah, as I, as I said, as I mentioned, I, I spoke at the annual Rare Earth Conference and one of the things that I said is that there, there's, there isn't enough rare earth, there isn't enough lithium, cobalt, any of the critical materials uh, associated with the, the uh, energy transition and the EV uh, and the transition of the automotive industry to EVs we don't have enough of. So clearly there needs to be more production throughout the supply chain. Um, and to, to paraphrase uh, the sheriff in Jaws, we need a bigger boat, simple as that. By the way, that wasn't an, not an original um, comment. I, I'm plagiarizing a friend who spoke at a conference and said, we need a bigger boat. So we need a bigger boat. The industry needs to, to mine more rare earths we need to refine more rares. We need to produce more magnets. End of story. So we all have our part to do. And we hope that um, at Neo Materials, we will be able to capitalize on these massive growth opportunities, not only in, uh, in Asia, but also in, in, in Europe, especially, where demand seems to be growing faster than anywhere else, with the exception of China, uh, and eventually in North America. So... Let me ask you one final question, please. What should we as shareholders be anticipating in this next quarter with the, the some relief from COVID-19's impact on our market? And can you also add a line or two on whether or not Neo Performance Materials is looking for acquisition opportunities? Well, we have been looking, the, the, the latter is a lot easier. Um, the, we, we have been had we've, we've had a full radar screen um, for a while now with um, things that we're looking at. The challenge for us is it's very we, we need to maintain discipline because you can easily fall in love with an acquisition and and pay you know crazy valuations for it. But you know if we're trading at a certain multiple, then it's very difficult to pay a significant premium for anything that we like, because, you know, in order to make it accretive, 
you cannot overpay. Um, and, you know, in, in our case, we passed on a couple of opportunities. We continue to look at others, but we're patient and we're disciplined. Uh, and we need to find something that fits and something that's accretive and something that um, has enough synergies in the best sense of the world. Synergies meaning we can take advantage of the combination to, do, to, to accelerate growth for both Neil and whoever uh, we end up buying. So in that sense, yeah, we continue to look, but we also continue to stay disciplined, as I said. Your first question about the third quarter, you know, we're so close to releasing, I'd, I'd rather not say anything that could possibly get me in trouble. Um, but on the strategic front, over the next little while, I, I would be looking for indications of um, how our European strategy is coming along. Because as you pointed out, we are the only company with a, a commercially operating rare earth production plant in Europe. Um, and we are the only company that operates parallel supply chains um, inside and outside of China for magnetic materials and rare earth based magnetic materials and advanced catalytic rare earth materials. So we need to continue to capitalize on that position and um, execute on a strategy that allows us to do that. So I'd be looking, again, I'm, I'm not suggesting that anything is imminent, but over the next uh, few quarters, uh, I would be looking for indications or manifestations of that strategy uh, being implemented in a way that makes sense. Well, you've heard it here at Investor Intel with Constantine Karanopoulos from Neo Performance Materials. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tracy, as always. Take care.